Okay, here we are in the Actions editor of Setup Factory in the On Startup tab, and we'll go ahead and look at expressions and operators. So I'm going to go ahead and type these demonstrations directly into the Actions editor, and then we'll run them. I'm going to go ahead and add an application exit action so that when our scripts are run, it's going to actually exit before the installer starts. So that's convenient for just testing stuff out. All right, an expression is anything that evaluates to a value. So for example, 3 plus 2 is an expression. In that case, it has an operator, which is the addition sign. And we're going to now look at the different types of operators available for you and how you can construct expressions out of those. OK, so the arithmetic operators will be our start. So we'll just go ahead and put in a comment. And that's a double hyphen. And that means that whatever we type on this line will not get parsed as code uh, at um, runtime. So we'll say arithmetic operators. And then we'll just type in here um, a dialog message action to demonstrate the uh, result of using these operators. And we'll actually type expressions directly into these dialog message actions. So I'm going to start here by saying 2 plus 3 equals in my title bar. And then I'm actually going to type in the expression 2 plus 3. OK, so you see what we did? We Instead of uh, putting in a string for our second argument, uh, we've put in 2 plus 3. OK, so we've actually typed an expression directly into an action. I'm going to copy that into my clipboard, and then I'm just going to paste it onto the next line and change the plus signs into minus signs. So there's our second arithmetic operator, the subtraction operator. Now we've got 2 minus 3, and we've changed the expression to 2 minus 3. I'm going to repeat that process by pasting and changing the operator for multiplication, as you can see here, and that's an asterisk, and division, that is a slash. Okay. So now we've got four dialog message actions set up to test our arithmetic operators for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And the final one we'll set up for is the negation operator, the unary uh, negative. So we'll put 2 plus a minus 3. So instead of uh, minus a positive, we're adding a negative. Okay. So there's our arithmetic operators. Let's go ahead and dig into our relational operators now. Relational operators are for comparing things to each other, to see how things relate to each other, values for example. So for example, the first relational operator is the greater than sign. Let's go ahead and set up some tests here and use our dialog messages to go ahead and, and uh, show some of these values. Now in this particular case, I'm going to use an if statement. And that's explained elsewhere on the CD here quite well. So I won't go into that here. Suffice to say that this is just so that we can demonstrate these operators. So we'll say if 5 is greater than 3, and we know it is, but we're going to go ahead and put that test in there anyway. We'll say then, and now we're going to go ahead and put a dialog message action in here. And we'll actually just, uh, for our title, we'll say your result. And then for the string, we'll say 5 is greater than 3. Now, we won't get too deep into the if action again for our, the if statement for this particular lesson. We'll just go ahead and add tests for each of our relational operators. So I'm going to copy this to my clipboard, these three lines, and then I'm going to go ahead and paste that. Now for the next one, we're going to go ahead and switch these values around. We're going to say if 3 is less than 5. Okay, so that's the first two relational operators, the greater than sign and the Oops, I forgot to type in my 3 here. I'm going to go ahead and type that in. There we go. Uh, the greater than sign and the less than sign, OK? That's the first two relational operators. And we've got four more to go. So let's go ahead here and put them in. I'm going to go ahead and paste uh, this action. And this time I'm going to say, for example, if 5 is greater than or equal to 5. Now we know 5 is not greater than 5, but in this case it's a double function operator. So it'll check to see if the value is greater than or equal to. So, oops, double double click there. There we go. We'll say 5 is greater than or equal to 5. OK, and now we'll paste in another action. In this case, we're going to say, let's switch the value. We'll say if 4 is less than or equal to 6. OK, then dialog message will answer. 4 is less than or equal to 6. OK, so that's going to test that. And we've got two more to go. So, so far we've got the greater than operator, the less than operator, the greater than or equal to operator, and the less than or equal to operator. Now, like I say, in the same 
uh, scenario here is in the third uh, equation, the fourth one here, this will test to see if this value, 4, is less than 6 or if 4 is equal to 6. So it's a double function uh, kind of a operator. Okay, now let's, let's uh, use the not equal to operator. And this is totally different. This is an equal sign with a tilde in front of it. So we'll say if 3 is not equal to 5, then dialog message 5 is not equal to 3. And for our final action here, we're going to set up an equal to comparison. And that's the double equal sign. Okay, now when you're assigning a value to a variable, you use the single equal sign. When you're using uh, this as a comparison or a relational operator, you need to use a double equal sign. So that's how that works. So if 3 is equal to 5, actually we'll go ahead and change this value so that we know it'll test true. If 7 is equal to 7, then result is 7 equals 7. Now this might seem like a slightly redundant example, but the point is to show you that it's testing true and that these relational operators offer you a way to compare values and then basically act upon the result of that comparison. Okay, so now we've got logical operators. There's just three of these, but they're very powerful and they allow you to create basically more advanced gates for your logic. So let's take a look at the logical operators and those would be AND, OR, and NOT. So we'll go ahead and set this up and again we're going to use an if statement. We'll say if 5 is greater than 3 and 4 is greater than 2 then give us a dialog message box and in this case I'm just going to keep the message very simple. We'll say your result and then I'm just going to say true. Okay. Again these are just basic basically uh, messages to serve as flags so that we can see uh, what the script is doing. All right, in this particular case, or actually we should make that message a little more relevant. So we'll say your result uh, 5 is greater than 3 and 4 is greater than 2. That way we know what we're looking at here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put in our end portion of the if statement. Again, we'll look at the if statements in detail elsewhere on the CD and we're going to look at our OR statement then. Okay now basically you can see here that we've got two tests inside the statement instead of one. Now you can put as many as you want and you can use AND or uh, the OR operators to compare between them. So in this case both of these tests have to be true in order to trigger our dialog message box. Now if we're using an OR statement, so I'm just going to cut and paste this and change this to say OR instead of AND, uh, it's different. Only one of these statements has to test to be true. So if I change the value here, so for example if 5 is greater than 7, which we know it's not, uh, the first test is going to be false. But since the second test will still be true, that OR um, operator is going to actually allow that dialog message to go ahead and be triggered. And we'll say uh, 5 is uh, what do we say here? Uh, greater than 7 or 4 is greater than 2. Okay? And the final one that we have here is the NOT operator and that's basically used uh, for toggling, for example, booleans. It'll, it'll toggle a value. So, for example, if we say here um, that we have a variable which is a boolean and we'll call it a toggler, let's say. We'll say toggler equals false. Now, if we set up an action here and we say toggler equals not toggler, it's going to actually go ahead and toggle that value. It's going to create uh, the opposite value of what was there. So in this case it's going to be now true. So if we go ahead and set up uh, one of our if statements here and we can say if toggler um, then Okay, and that's actually the shortcut. You don't actually have to say if toggler equals true. In this case, we just have to test to see if the value has been set. And the syntax for that is simply to say if toggler. So it's a very simplified uh, version of that. And we can say if toggler, then give me a dialog message. And in this case, we'll say your result. And we'll say toggler is true. Okay, because if it's not true, the if statement will not test and this will not get triggered. So we've got uh, a couple uh, portions of this not statement. Let's examine it once more before we run it. We've set the value of a boolean variable, which is a two position variable with a false or true um, value, uh, to false. And then we've used the not operator 
to toggle that value. We say toggler is not toggler. In other words, whatever the other value is, it becomes that. So this is nice. We can toggle Boolean values without even knowing what the original value was. And then if uh, toggler is true, and we've used the shortcut for that by just saying if toggler, uh, then it's going to give us this dialog message. Okay, so that's a simple example of that. And we'll just look at the last operator here, which is going to be concatenation. And then we'll go ahead and run this. Now concatenation is basically an operator to stitch together um, variables or values. Okay, so what am I doing here? There we go. Concatenation operator. Okay, so if we had, for example, uh, a variable that said first name equals John, okay? And then we had a second variable that said last name equals Smith. And we wanted to display those in a dialog message together. We would have to use a concatenation operator. Concatenation operator is two periods together. So let's go ahead and try this out. We'll set up a dialog message box. And then we'll go ahead and enter into the title. We'll say name is. And then for the body area here, we're going to go ahead and concatenate our values to give us our name. So we'll say uh, first name. And then we'll use our concatenation operator, which is two periods. We'll put a space in there by putting in a quotation marks with a space in between. We'll put in the concatenation operator again, which is two periods. And then we'll stitch on the last name. Okay? Let's go ahead and I'm just going to eliminate this line. And I think we've covered everything. The only thing we didn't cover here was operator precedence. So for example, uh, you remember from high school that when you're doing math, uh, the multiplication gets done prior to the addition and so on and so forth. Uh, the operator precedence, in order to um, keep it clear, I won't outline it here. I'll encourage you to go into the documents. It's uh, quite clearly documented in there and you can take a look at the list. Uh, and that's a lot simpler. But basically, there's an order in which these operators are going to be uh, committed if you do them in, in a row. So for example, if we say 3 plus 2 times 3 divided by 4 minus 5, that's a complicated statement. And those are going to be executed not necessarily in the order you type them. They're going to be operated, or sorry, they're going to be uh, executed according to operator precedence. So take a look at that in the docs and see how it works out. Now, the only thing is to mention here that you can override how they're treated. So for example, if we put brackets around the 3 plus 2, and we put brackets around the 3 divided by 4, you start to get a picture of how this is actually going to be executed. So you can specify how your, your uh, expressions are executed by using brackets. But let's go ahead and run our demo now and take a look at how these operators and expressions work out. We'll press OK. We'll go ahead and build our project and take a look. Here we go. OK. 2 plus 3 equals 5. 2 minus 3 equals minus 1, which is correct. 2 times 3 equals 6. You can see it's giving us the value of the expressions that we typed in there, not the expressions themselves. So if you recall, for this particular action, we had typed 2 times 3 in as the expression of the dialog message action. And of course, it's giving us the result, which is 6, rather than the original uh, expression. So everything's working perfect. 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds. Uh, 2 plus a negative 3 is minus 1. Yeah, that's correct. And now it's getting into the um, relational operators. And we can see 5 is greater than 3. 5 is greater than 3. Now this was the second test, actually. I should have changed it to say 3 is less than 5, because this is the second test where we used the less than operator. 5 is greater than or equal to 5, which is true. And that's where we use the greater than or equal to sign. Here we've used the less than or equal to sign to get the result. 4 is less than or equal to 6. We've got our uh, not equal to operator here, right? With the 5 is not equal to 3. And here's our equals uh, relational operator. Uh, that was the double equal sign. 7 equals 7. OK, now we're into the logical operators. So we're using the and operator here. And we've got our result. 5 is greater than 3, and 4 is greater than 2. So in other words, both the tests test to, to, to be true. And so, oops, there we go. And so our value worked out. And that's because we had the AND statement. Now in the next one, we're using the OR statement. So only one of these statements has to be true, because it's this OR this instead of this AND this. OK, so we've got 5 is greater than 7, which of course is not true. OR 4 is greater than 2, and we know that is true. So that's why this uh, dialog message actually is present. OK, so the last one here, we've got the uh, NOT operator, 
or sorry, second to last, the not operator, you can see it toggled to toggler is true. Even though we typed in specifically that toggler was false, we toggled it using that not operator. And there's our concatenation operator. You can see it inserted the space between the names John and Smith, just exactly like we wanted. And that was using the concatenation or double period operator. Let's just go back and review the script and then we can move on from here. This has been a long lesson and I hope uh, you know everybody's hung in there. It's important to know this stuff and see how it works. And this is a good basic way uh, just by working out a quick demo like this to see how all this stuff works. Okay, so we went through our arithmetic operators which are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and negation. Then we went through our relational operators which are greater than, less than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, not equal to, or equal to. And then we went through our logical operators which are and, or, and not. And then we did our concatenation operator, which is the double period or the double dot, which allows us to stitch two values together. Okay, so that's it for expressions and operators. That's the basics. Let's go ahead.